Hello, my name is Gareth McDowell from 493K and I want to share with you some cycle reducing techniques that we have used successfully in the field. We're going to start by looking at the internal air trace of a mould. That's where it all comes back to. If you're monitoring temperature with a K pack or with K control, then you can make informed decisions on how best to reduce your cycle times. So let's take a look at the graph that we have already drawn on the board. I would stress that this is just a schematic of the graph and it might not be exact. But what we've got here is we've got an oven temperature, of an air temperature and we've got the internal air temperature trace of the rotational mould. The air is heating up. We've got this horizontal plateau showing where the polymer would be melting. We've got the peak internal air temperature here. We've got the, the cooling period. We've got the solidification period and then we've got a release point where the, the plastic mould is coming away from the metal mold. So what are the kind of techniques that we would use in a, a, a customer's plant to reduce their cycle times? Well the obvious one is oven temperature. If you increase your oven temperature you're going to reduce your cycle time. But of course we need to make sure that we don't overcook the part, rising the peak internal air temperature too much and we need to look at our gas consumptions and things like that. But again if you're monitoring temperature, then you can make uh, these decisions in, a, in, a, in, a, in an informative way. So, oven temperature. If you were to increase your oven temperature, say from 260 to 280, uh, it will effectively increase the rate at which the heat goes into the mould. So this graph would all move to the left a little bit. So you're going to get something like like this and you'll get this time saving here. The other thing we would look at is are you hitting the correct uh, peak internal air temperature? Perhaps you're cooking it for too much uh, time in the oven. So you want to look at what you've got and decide whether that can be adjusted. If it can be lowered well and good that means you can perhaps pull it out from the oven a little bit sooner. So there is going to be a time saving there as well. If you do need to keep it in the oven a little bit longer, then that extra time hopefully could be uh, compensated with by the increase in the oven temperature. Sintering. I don't like this word sintering, but we'll use it because it's a word that is often uh, talked about in rotational molding machinery, the center period. Uh, the center position, that's the place between the oven at the back and the cooler at the side. So that's the place where um, the mold goes to after it comes out of the oven but before it goes into the cooling bay. Uh, that period is not necessary unless you're, you've actually got fans out the back. So if you've got a centering position out the back and you've no fans out the back then I would recommend that you add fans out the back, start cooling straight away. What that means is that you can perhaps increase the uh, cooling rate of the moulding as soon as it comes out of the oven rather than just waiting for something to happen. So we could increase time there. Okay. The other place where a lot of time is lost is at the demolding position. Um, the mould has gone into the cooling bay and it's cooling in the cooling bay for 30 minutes, for example. At the end of those 30 minutes, let's get that mould out of the cooling bay and let's start demolding. Too many times I see a, a stationary mould sitting in the cooling bay, not doing anything. That's holding up your machine potentially and it's actually still cooling. So if you're wanting to keep track of quality of your parts, uh, make parts that have similar shrinkage, similar warpage, then you need to get that part out of the mould straight away. 
The other thing to look at is what is the demold temperature, not the time, the temperature. The, the time should vary on your demolding depending what the ambient outside air is. If it's a warm day outside, you're, you should really be cooling it for longer until you get to the perfect demold temperature. If it's very cold outside, then you perhaps can reduce your cooling cycle time and pull it out of the cooler earlier. Again, if you're using K-Pack or K-Control, you can measure these temperatures and make informed decisions. So perhaps we can demold a little bit earlier. Um, and when you're, when you're trying to find out the perfect demold temperature, what I would suggest is start at where you are now, back it off five degrees Celsius or, or extend it until it's cooled a further five degrees Celsius if your demold point is not quite right, but do it in small incremental steps. So there's the potential to save uh, time there as well. So there is just a brief overview of some of the cycle techniques that we use in rotational molding with temperature control to reduce your cycle times. Thank you very much. My name's Gareth McDowell and this is a short video from 493K.